The main thing about Joe that I remember was his, um, I guess we could call his personality. So um, his, he was funny and uh, he was easy to be with, but he was also, he had a certain, he kind of insisted, especially over the years, even more so on a certain integrity, uh, a certain quality that had to do with uh, being honest, both to himself and with other people. And that came across with him. So when the, um, like I say, I got to know him in the late 60s, let's say, but by about 1980 when his whole, his energy changed and his relation to the art world changed, and part of that had to do with the 1980s and what the, what the art scene was becoming, becoming more um, uh, commercial and uh, sort of uh, theatrical. You know, uh, and it was a whole sort of new feeling in the art world in the 80s in New York that I, I don't think, I think Joe didn't, um, it, it was, not, was not comfortable with. Uh, Joe was very, uh, not only was he funny, it wasn't so much that he was funny so much as he uh, insisted on uh, humor, in, putting humor into his works. And not the only thing, it wasn't the only thing that was in his works, but humor um, breaks down barriers and again brings you down to a more, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a more easeful, informal um, energy. My personal relationship was more or less as a friend who occasionally collaborated with him. I wasn't, I myself personally wasn't into collaboration as, as much as other poets were among the poets and then also the painters. But Joe and I did works together. We did cartoons together. We did a, a cartoon called Kiss My Ass, which was published by Adventures in Poetry. Um, and we did a couple other collaborations together. I would say uh, there was a rich social life, uh, social, um, like dinners, things like that. Lunches, dinners. Uh, weekends in the country, that type of thing, which um, in the, especially in the years that Ann and I were, Ann Waldman and I were together from 1969 to 1976, during those years uh, we, we certainly saw a lot of people. We also saw Joe and Kenward, uh, and, but Joe by himself also, you know, socially. And out of that energy came works that were sometimes collaborative and some not, you know. I mean, his whole, um, he could be a very formal artist, obviously, but uh, his whole involvement with cartoons is, is something that keeps bringing you back to, um, well, first of all, it can bring you back to your adolescence, and it can bring you back to a sort of, again, a more um, spontaneous and informal and... Uh, kind of an unfussy approach to life, you know, as an artist. A certain period he went through, and obviously speed is involved in this, but it, when you say speed, you have to remember speed in combination with what sensibility. I mean, because there's plenty of, plenty of speed, people who were into speed who did a lot of stuff that wasn't interesting at all. So you take someone like Joe, who was doing very interesting work to begin with, and uh, at any rate, the period I'm talking about is, um, when he was picking things up off the street, off the street and off the sidewalk, and bringing them back to his studio and, and using them for uh, collages. And he would pick up just detritus, just any kind of stuff that people were throwing away. Joe had a very fine focus, right? So he could go in to things that were an eighth of an inch long, or images, or bits of images, or words, or colors, or whatever, uh, evocative of something or other, and also on a larger scale, but he could start at that very small scale and start making these, uh, these confections out of them. And it got to the point where, um, I think several times, where his loft, um, where his loft got filled to above ankle level with 
with uh, all of the stuff that he brought in from the street. I mean, you know, all kinds of images and objects and cutouts and things that he also got from other sources, which eventually became sort of like a snowstorm or blizzard. It sort of it it, it got to this point where it's it was sort of starting to swamp his uh, his studio. And then he would take out a photo. There's a famous photograph of Gandhi's belongings. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Gandhi's belongings. Uh, there's a photograph of Gandhi's belongings, which were his essentially his slippers, his eyeglasses, and uh, you know maybe one other thing like a copy of the Bhagavad Gita or something like that. In other words, there were like three objects, and that was Gandhi's total possessions. And Joe would take that out and put it on the. Um, Every couple of years, I would say, probably take it out and put it on the mantelpiece and then clear out, throw away everything that was in the studio, which I thought was sensational, which is one of, one of the times I went over there when he was in the middle of doing that so that I could um, uh, film it, which I did. I mean, you know, it's super eight, it was sort of kind of muddy images and everything, but nevertheless, that was... Uh, what I did. So um, those years were great because he was in the middle of a sort of a creative energy all the time on that, that level. 